Greenland, Earth's largest island. Scientists are sampling, drilling, and flying over this great island because they believe it may be a bellwether of future Earth. Greenland is two million square kilometers of land, 81% of which is covered by a giant central ice cap, the inland ice. Here is 2.8 million cubic kilometers of ice, layered and packed over the millennia. Its thickest points lie beneath two massive ridges, the northern at three kilometers thick, the southern at over 3.2 kilometers. The inland ice basin is framed by parallel mountain ranges. Its bedrock basement floor is down near sea level, depressed by the weight of the ice above it. If this ice sheet were to melt, the land beneath would be underwater, dotted with small islands. Over time, with the weight lifted, it would gradually rise. Today, the sheer mass of the inland ice exerts a gravitational pull on surrounding oceans. This pull raises sea levels all around the island. In the event of extreme melting, a recent study showed that sea levels would actually drop out to a distance of about 1,000 kilometers. More distant shores, however, would experience an average global sea level rise of over seven meters. In this time of rising temperatures across the Arctic, scientists are working to find out how quickly the ice is melting now and how much of it has melted in the past. Greenland today is a laboratory for studying the history of our planet. Its landscapes and fjords tell the story of mountain building, volcanism, ice ages, and the rise of living organisms. The parallel mountain ranges that line its east and west coasts go back three to four hundred million years. Those mountains have been shaped by an ice age that has enveloped the Earth over the last two and a half million years, the Quaternary. In this period, the ice sheet ebbed and flowed. To find out just how dynamic this ice sheet is, scientists have been crisscrossing the island, using radar to see all the way down to the bedrock. Combining radar and deep drilling data, they are attempting to lay out the history of the inland ice over the last 100,000 years. The top layers formed in the current period, the Holocene, going back 12,000 years. The middle layer is the product of the last ice age beginning 70,000 years ago. Finally, the bottom layer is what remained in the last period of global warming, the Eemian, from roughly 130 to 115,000 years ago. Global temperatures were comparable to what they are today. However, there is thought to have been greater seasonal variation in the Northern Hemisphere, possibly linked to changes in the orientation of the Earth to the Sun, known as Milankovitch cycles. The Eemian was discovered by a 19th century Dutch scientist 
who found mollusk fossils much farther north than their current range. Areas of the far north that are now tundra were found to have been forested. At the same time, sea levels rose during the Eemian to between six and nine meters above what they are today. It's still not certain how much the melting of Greenland's ice contributed to this rise. Today, across the Arctic, summer sea ice continues to retreat to historic minimums. Scientists are tracking its year-to-year -year behaviors with precision satellite measurements. And they are looking intensively at the behavior of Greenland's inland ice. The GRACE mission has tracked changes in the mass of these great ice stores, with pink showing areas of greatest loss from 2004 to 2014. This image shows the loss of elevation along the southern coastlines as a result of melting. 75% of this loss comes from coastal glaciers flowing into the sea, a rate of about 200 cubic kilometers per year. With ice packed into narrow openings, these glaciers act as dams, holding the ice sheet behind it in place. As air and ocean temperatures rise, the ice dams can become unstable and break off into icebergs. This process is called calving. The Jakobshavn Glacier drains into the western coast, producing some 35 billion tons of icebergs each year. The fastest moving glacier of all, Jakobshavn, is now surging into the sea at a rate of 17 kilometers per year, three times faster than it moved in the mid-1990s. This sequence, reconstructed from radar satellite data, shows the Helheim Glacier, named for the realm of the dead in Norse mythology. It drains the inland ice along Greenland's southeastern coast. The calving front, or seaward edge, extended out to here in the year 2000. It retreated to here in 2013, as the flow pushed the forward edge into the sea. Then there's the giant Zachariah ice stream. Once considered Greenland's last remaining stable glacier, it drains the heart of the inland ice along the northeast coast. From 2003 to 2014, it retreated about 20 kilometers and lost 10 billion tons of ice. At this rate, it will still take millennia for Greenland's ice to melt down to the level of the Eemian. But there are signs that the melting could accelerate. Increasingly in summer, surface meltwaters collect in ponds on the surface of the ice sheet. This is an area just south of the Jakobshavn Glacier. As these ponds deepen, they can begin to drain down through cracks in the ice. That may increase melting by carrying heat down to the base of the ice sheet. When this happens, friction between the rock and the ice above it is reduced and the flow speeds up. As monolithic as it seems today, in the long horizons of geological history, the inland ice has been found to ebb and flow. In these warmer times, 
the ice appears to be drawing down. How quickly this is happening and what effect it will have on sea levels is a matter of debate and research. So the monitoring continues as meltwaters pond, glaciers calve, and the ice flows into the sea. <laughs> 